Yeah. I know somebody. Thank you. Oh. There you go. Now it's working. Trust me, how are you? <laughs> oh. Okay, we call to order at. to approve the minutes. With the corrections, then of removing the names from the staff president, Jane Patrick, and Joanna Castorama. Hmm. And do I have a motion still? Yes, I have a second. A second. Thank you. The old business. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. We didn't vote. All those in favor? Aye. Right now, 
So we're prioritizing those projects, um, and which I think I told you about last time. But why I wanted to bring it forward again is because we did meet with the Nikki Foundation, and they have agreed once again to split the cost with us. So they will pay 50% of those costs, whatever we determine, um, whenever we determine what those repairs will be. Also part of the conversation with the Nikki Foundation was potentially using a different artist to make the repairs, to, to bid out the project, if you will, and they were on board with that. They wanted to make sure that the artists that we chose, they approved. They did give me a name of a woman up in LA, um, and I just need to, I have not yet, but I do need to reach out to her and see if she can come down here, take a look at the sculpture, and give us an alternate bid, and then we'll be able to move from there. So, like I said, we'll still be prioritizing because clearly we don't have, I think in our maintenance fund, I think we have $108,000 left. Um, so, we will have to prioritize the projects and then moving forward, I, uh, we have some other ideas on how we can do some revenue generating ideas that we also talked to Nikki about, but I will talk about that later on in the agenda. So, we're moving forward with the repairs to the Queen slowly but surely. Um, on my plate now to contact this other artist and get the alternate quote, um, and then we can prioritize those areas. My areas of priority, those large sections that are missing tile, um, if you have anything that you'd like to share that you, you'd like to um, prioritize um, today, here, what would you would like to see done, I'd be happy to hear those suggestions. I would say there's yours. Okay. Because we have covered And I think, um, Marty, you were here when we were here, right? Uh, a couple you times. See it. You can see the lighter colors, kind of whitish. Well, <clears throat> the, the whiteness, that will come with, with just aging. We had talked about that. It, when they first replaced it, it was really bright, but it stayed with the same formula and color, it wasn't really, it's, it was just the difference between a new piece and the natural aging of the others. And it is slowly muting as it gets dirty and grimy with everything else. So that kind of will take care of itself. Um, my biggest concern about the floor, though, because we've had it repaired previously, and some discussion that I've had with Lec trying to understand you know, what is happening, um, there's more to it than just on the surface and the cosmetics. There's something to do either with uh, the settling of the ground, uh, a water table. Um, so it becomes a little more complicated. I believe, I was told there were some engineering reports at one time where they tried to assess what the problem was. We've had outside um, individuals that have said, oh, it's got to be from tree roots. Um, so there's a, a whole variety of um, reasonings of why it keeps breaking. But just to repair it cosmetically isn't going to serve the purpose, because it'll just break again. And that's, that's pretty much what Lex said. The, there is a break. And in fact, when, when you all are down there, if you Maybe just as the, the sitters are down there, um, take a look and see if you can see any pattern of break that is going south of it over by the tree and the planter. And that new seating area, I was told that there's some cracks that are starting to show up there. Just to see if maybe there is something to the fact that it's a tree or a water line or something a lot deeper that only surfaces several feet away. Um, those were all suspicions, but as of yet, I, I don't know if there's been any study done. So yes, it's a priority, certainly a safety issue, and that bothers me a great deal as well as it just looks bad. Um, but you know, we need to start somewhere. So the larger pieces, of, the larger damage and repair uh, things that we do um, in order 
to make it more attractive right off the bat. I think we should go ahead and go forward and not not waste too much more time on the on the uh, flooring until we can figure out what the problem is. So I, I totally agree with with the, the suggestion of working on the snake walls and getting those done. Okay, and regarding the trees, I did talk to the Public Works Department. We do have arborists on staff, and they're willing to go out there and look and remove any tree that we deem necessary if it's starting to break up. The, it, I specifically was talking about the trees that are inside of the sculpture garden that are in the planters. Yeah. Um, I think that's what's probably causing the problem uh, with the cracks in the benches. Um, but they were even talking about the, the much larger trees on the outside of the, the perimeter of the sculpture and maybe thinning those out, maybe taking out every other one. So um, those discussions are happening as well. I just don't want to get rid of too much of the shade. So I think we need to be strategic as far as where we remove the trees from. Yeah, that's the only shade we have. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely, absolutely. Um, there was also a comment about the particular trees that we're talking about and being that we planted them there, if any of them were protected. Um, some of the California indigenous trees are protected, and I would assume that the arborists would be aware of that as well. They are, and I think what we discussed is, and it's a city policy across the board, that if we remove one, we just have to replace. And I think we have to replace every one we remove, we have to replace with two. Oh, okay. So as long as we follow that protocol, we should be fine. But the arborist is well aware of what we'll need to do, so all right. they won't let us get in trouble. Well, that's, that's, that's all good news. You know, we, don't, we don't need to get any more trouble. So you're saying to just start with the snakes and then the door later, but we haven't had another report from separate, you know, right? It has always been the same person that gave the estimates. We never have somebody else, right? On an artist on the floor. Oh, on the floor? Uh -huh. um, for the cosmetic work, yes. But I, I think if we hear my understanding was there was an engineer that had come out. What I can do, I can follow up with Christina and see, because I don't have that history, so yeah. I can follow up with Christina and see if there was um, some kind of engineering study done to see. I did hear that it could have potentially been the water line that originally went to the egg. Um, yeah. So um, I'll, I'll follow up with her and see if there's been one. And, and then there are very specific plans on where all those lines were done and everything. Uh, I, I know that uh, from way back when, when they were uh, preparing the land and build on it. There are specific plans, so I would assume that those would be in our archives to see if, where the water lines are and see if the, there is a potential problem there. The only bad thing about that is the, the egg has been turned off so there shouldn't be water, then the floor was repaired and it broke again. So that doesn't really coincide. Well, maybe that wasn't the issue. What's the water theory? Yeah. Well, we need to basically find out yeah. what's the cause of it. Yeah, but I, I really I really would uh, not really put it on the back burner necessarily, but I know that um, you know the, the snakes need it's just been too long, and there's another big section, probably a good 18 inches, that's ready to go. And they do, they'll fall without warning, you know, heaven forbid, there's little kids or anything. Because I was there one day when a whole section fell out, you know, bigger than the dinner plate, and I could be heavy. Thank you. So that is the repairs uh, regarding the Queen um, Item B signage, Item C benches. Okay, so the signage, we received a quote for all the signs that we had requested. It was, um, let's see where I have it here. So the total quote, this was for the no food and drinking signs. 
Um, nine directional signs, so pulling people in from the beginning of the park all the way into the queen with a couple of extras in case we needed them along the way, one they fade out or whatever. Um, two of the, I'm sorry, three of the informational signs, those green ones that have the dates and the times. And, um, the artwork sign, which was the most expensive, it's the interpretive sign that's inside the garden that has Nikki and all the information. And then there's a the design setup fee. The total cost for that is um, 15 different, I'm sorry, 13 different signs, was $3,470. Um, I've reached out, what I'd like to suggest is that we hold off on the interpretive sign. I did ask the Nikki Foundation if they would pay for that, um, and they were not um, supportive of that request. So um, I think at this time, so that we can move forward, uh, with getting all these other signs, we hold off on the interpretive sign for now. I know that it needs to be replaced. I know that the film that's on top of it is peeling off, but it will take more time to get additional quotes because of this cost is over $2,000. And if, I, if we remove that from the mix, that sign alone was $1,900. So if we remove that sign, we can move forward with the rest of the signs and then address that um, interpretive sign at a later date. So I kind of, and I've also reached out, we talked about changing the dates and being able to manipulate the sign as things change, if we have a special opening, if we increase days. So I did reach out to the sign company. He said that they have signs where they can um, um, have sections that you can change out that have some type of tamper-proof bolt on it because I was worried about it. It's just a little, uh, it's just a little plaque or something that you hang on there. I was worried about people taking them. So he said that they have a system where it has a little uh, bolt that you can change out the information. So I asked him for the same size sign, a quote for that, and pictures. I just have not received that yet. But we are hopeful. I'm, hopefully I'll have that within a week or so, and I can send that out um, for you guys to review. But um, those signs, the original cost was... Uh, for three of them, it was $465. And we have wiggle room. As long as we don't go over $2,000, I think I, I'll be able to move forward quickly with um, with purchasing these signs. So we definitely have some wiggle room, even if they're a little bit more expensive. So I just want to hear from you guys that that's the route that you would like to go. And if you're OK with holding off on the artwork sign until a little bit later. Yeah. I definitely think uh, the signs uh, that gives the accurate information on the world and what days and all that is a priority. Um, I, I'm, I'm perfectly okay with uh, uh, waiting for the interior sign and get some more quotes on your name. It, it sounds a little steep for what they're talking about, but I'm no sign person. Uh, question, does the city not have any uh, in-house sign in, any longer in public works or anything, or is it just for traffic stuff? We do have in-house sign um, makers, but they requested that we go out because of the specialized graphic that has oh. to go on. Okay. I have a question. It kind of 465 for the uh, informational, right, you say? Yeah, for three. They were 155 each. That's pretty inexpensive. They're metal, right? They are. Then why is the other one 1900 Well, it's more of a wooden board. I mean, it's, it's very large. Well, let me see the size. It's so a wooden board. Why do we have to do it all over again? It's just the lamination that is wrong with it. Just the cover. Why would you do the whole thing again? I don't know if they'll be able to remove the lamination without damaging the, the image. I, it's something we could look into. Yeah, that, that's why um, I said I thought that 1900 for, for one sign. If, if, in fact, they have, if they can salvage the image and they have to start from scratch, then I, then I understand that. Um, so what is underneath? Do we, is there the lamination on top and under, under that we have a printed? No, so what is it? It says it's a high pressure, high pressure laminate panel, single sided, 
That's actually all it says. It's 48 by 36. So this is just one quote. I can reach out to other vendors and see if they have, this is who we used in the past. So that's why I reached out to them again. Yeah, I've been looking at that for quite a while and I've felt of it. It almost feels like an embossed uh, like metal or something. I don't, I don't think it's metal, but it might be a poly or something, but I, I don't think it's cardboard. So, it, and it looks like somebody did dig into it to get that far and the picture is still there. So I think, I don't know, that, that's a good question. So yeah, so the question would be, can we remove that, the, the plastic cover without damaging that? Because if it happens again, we're going to have to pay again 1900 every time. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Is there a way to give Seems it? like plexiglass over the top of it or something, kind of a full Pre sheet. Uh, um, if my memory serves me, we did have a plexiglass cover over originally. And then I think with the new materials and everything, because the plexi gets scratched easy and it fogs up and critters get in there, et cetera. And I think that was their option. But if, if we're going to have that kind of damage, um, it'd be a lot cheaper to replace a sheet of plexi um, mm -hmm. for somebody tearing it up okay. than, than harming right onto the image. Well, I'm going to look into that for you guys. I'm not sure. I didn't look into that originally because I just thought I didn't have these wonderful ideas. So um, I will look into it if we can remove the film and just replace the film. Or if not, we replace it and we enclose it in some kind of plexiglass so that we don't have to replace the actual signage ever again, just the, just the cover. Do you need a motion to approve that? Uh, no. No. Okay. Um, and then the benches. We're looking at getting benches in there um, in the entryway. Public Works had a few that they had offered to us, but apparently they are too large. They won't fit the space. So um, we'll have to go out and look for, we're looking for, I think, six foot benches. And Public Works had eight, I'll have to confirm that. But um, we would like to put um, one, between one and three benches in the entry area so that when you guys have large group events, there's more places for people to sit, maybe when you're giving them your, your speech or, you know, your, um, introduction. yeah, your introduction. Um, so that will be something, I don't know, um, we have, I'll reach out, I, I'm going to try to get Public Works to do that for us because they have companies that they use regularly. So I'll be hopefully getting public works to get us a couple of quotes on that. But we're looking at one to three benches in the entryway. Um, What's the material that it would be? What is the material? They'll probably be that, um, like, I don't know what it's called, but the, the plastic wood type, the decking. Oh, like Trex. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Trex. Probably. I, I'm not sure. Do you have a recommendation or a suggestion? I, I was just trying to picture it with the mosaic and something that would be pretty with it. You know, wood, yeah, there are the wooden benches. There, right now, there's wooden benches in there. Like around the back side, though, no, which I don't think anyone ever uses. So um, it would be something. Yeah, we make sure that it fit in nicely with the sculpture. I'm not going to throw like, concrete part benches in there or anything. Yeah, it's in the, it's in the dirt and the first trees are hanging over it. Or it is. So they'll have to pour a concrete pad and then they'll put the benches on top of that and they'll secure them somehow. Is there any thought to bring it out to local high schools at the woodworking department or Palomar College which is a woodworking as a project maybe? Yeah, well, that's a great idea. Uh, we get Eagle Scout projects too. We can suggest, yeah. That's And you said Palomar? Palomar College. And who was the other? Uh, one of the high schools. Oh. I, you know, uh, that was well had been involved with the Eagle Scouts. And, um, they had done the work over there, by the way. Yeah. 
suicide, taking it out at night. that were supposed to could have been free. They say they're too large. They said they're too large for the area. I think they're eight feet. Oh, there's a slope. There's a couple slopes that will cause a problem, but there's a couple slopes and there's a couple trees. The, where they were thinking of. One of the locations was right in the middle, so when you got the walkway that comes in, um, they were thinking right in the middle there, and then one on the, basically one on the right and one on the left. Mm -hmm. And the area, the one on the left, um, I'm sorry, the one on the right where the interpretive sign is, that's what's causing, I think, the, the lack of space there. The other side, um, the other side probably would be slow. But it is sloped, and the trash can is there in that little donation box. Yeah. But they said, I mean, we can potentially remove those, but but they would prefer we got the smaller batches. Oh, okay. Well, if, if they've already assessed it, because I was I was thinking also that you know we could get even the eight foot, but if there's a tree right in the way, that is okay. So that's great. One to three minutes. But we have no idea how long we have to wait for that. Um, I don't have a timeline for you, but hopefully, well, hopefully, I'll try, let, let's try to get them by February. By our next meeting, hopefully we can have them in place. That will be if we purchase them. If I do reach out to Palomar or something like that, that that's going to change the timeline because obviously it's going to be on, on their timeline as volunteer work. So, you have second Saturday coming up. I was going to say if you want to see, maybe bring your measuring thing and see if eight people would fit anywhere. Just, just thought it was safe as money. That's what I'm thinking. You know, so maybe when you're there, see. Yeah, I'll, I'll <clears throat> yeah, because we don't we don't have a lot. It's one thing for them to rest, but we also wanted to place it that they would have a good view of the entry, rather than like we have that wooden bench that's back over there, and if you sit there it's strictly to rest, you know, you can't admire the, right. the beauty really. So that's why we were trying to determine where they could fit in that were par parallel to the sidewalk. So as you come down either the the ramp or the steps, there would be something there that people could rest and still see the entry. Yeah, yeah, so it would, it would just uh, flank the, the walkway there. Can I ask a real quick question? It has to link What was the reasoning by placing It was the artist and the city. Her, 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 first, her first recommendation was up on the hill. That's where she went and put it. And, they, and you know, that was too, too many problems. So then she settled for that low spot. And then when the, uh, the family, uh, the Shanky family, said they were okay with using that land. Um, but she liked, she liked the seclusion of the idea of where it was, even though it's quite convenient once you figure out where it is as a visitor. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah. Oh, okay, so are there any more questions about uh, the Queen Collegium Repair? Okay, so then. Uh, well, I was uh, assuming that we all got these wonderful maps and all this fabulous information about the mural program. So, so I'm going to pull up the map here, and then I'm going to ask 
Um, Anna Marie actually put this map together for us, and then I um, just updated the, the list of locations here, um, and then sent it out to you all. So um, I'm going to turn over the discussion to Anna Marie. I have a few printed. One of the doses from Fort Saturday helped. So she was driving and I was taking up. So if I point, it doesn't impact anything. So one would be right in the corner of Juniper and Grant, where 7 Eleven is. Right? So it says Bird Heaven. Now, Bird Heaven has a bird there. Uh, but that, that's going to be one of the So uh, that is a really nice wall. So that's one. And as you move down, so you're going to go down on Grand Avenue and go one, two, three. And this is one uh, I talked to. Uh, Number two, this is the side of that tamale little store on Maple Avenue. Maple Plaza? Maple Street Plaza. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, Danielle, I showed you Danielle, and uh, it's a really nice wall. The only thing is it has a few tiny little palm trees. But what is nice about it is a gathering place, a place where we have public, you know, different kinds of stuff. So that's really nice. Is that private? Do we know? It is. It's owned by a family trust. Private. Is that the Parking lot. I mean, a few. There's a tiny little tamale store that opened maybe two years ago. Tiny little hole in the wall, and then comes uh, the Maple Plaza. Yeah, I think there is parking along the side of that building, though. Oh. On the Maple Street Plaza yeah. side, I don't think they park. They don't park on the building side. They park on the um, the Maple Street Plaza side. But there's still a wide. But that's I don't think it would obstruct the view at all. Oh, okay. That's what I was wondering. Yeah. Yeah, I never seen many people. So let's go on. Okay, then continue around. John Paul the Great University has a really nice building where it says number three. Can you see number three? And before four. Uh, yeah, and in that, of course, and then number four is a bank. And I was looking at banks thinking these are maybe organizations or institutions that probably can. Number five, go all the way to audience of Grand, and then come back on second, turn around and come back on second, and say five, six. And I was basically directed there by the woman who is in the visitor office. What is her name? Catherine Zimmer. Yes. So she said, look at that beautiful, and it's a huge wall that is the side of the water but with one main problem. Nobody can see that wall because second is going east and then center city is going sideways at 50 miles an hour, so unless you're walking. And then also there is an empty lot in front of it and the city, uh, I think it belongs to the city, right? But I was told by the uh, building department that they are, have plans to build something. So that five, six, you know, I, that is an odd place even to find the restaurant when it first went up. If it didn't have those big tower things, you wouldn't even see it. So that's a bummer. It's a, it's a nice place. That empty, empty lot is not going to be empty for long. You cross right, you cross Center City, continue on second going east, and Mirancho Tortilleria has a very nice uh, walk towards second. If you continue going east, this town tire has a really nice wall that you face as you're driving east. Uh, Bank of America is a huge building. It's facing second. It's facing second in two ways, sideways and frontways. That has a lot of walls that can be used. Okay. Now, this is the next one, number nine. I 
I don't understand why the city has allowed AT&T to have such a run-down building in the center of downtown. It's the ugliest building in the city, as far as I'm concerned. And we can't say they don't have money. So uh, that would be lovely. I mean, that could be huge. It could be first floor, second floor. There are like three floors high, three-story high, or maybe even higher. I don't know. They have a tower, right? Okay, then keep on well, going. Was, I'm sorry to interrupt. That was one of the ones that um, I was looking at who the owner was, um, and that is owned by Pacific Bell AT&T. They, they own it. Yeah. So that's a good one. See, we have a major threat. Continue up east, going east. The Vida Dialysis on 2nd and Calmia also has a good wall. Continue the neighborhood health care and so on. Juniper. And then we turn around. We turn around on the, I think we turn around on <coughs> 13 is in the corner of Valley Parkway now, and June, and then we turn back west. So 14 would be San Diego County Credit Union, and I have a feeling that they would be willing to partner with us uh, and have some of their walls for me. So that to me is a good then, and then we made a right on uh, Broadway. And uh, so 15 is the Walgreens in the corner of Washington and Broadway. And then 16 is the Light Gallery in Calmia. Oh, now we're back in downtown, downtown central. So Calmia and, and Grant. I call it the Light Gallery. <coughs> Yeah, I'm sorry. I looked at the I looked at the old map. I realized that after I printed it, I think it's been collected. Yeah. yeah, they have a beautiful long uh, upper part of the building on on Calle. Uh The Escondido Public Library has a beautiful wall facing second. Uh, Coast sewing and vacuum. They probably couldn't be partners, but they. And then we went back into Valley Parkway, Fat Burger, that little plaza uh, in the corner of Center City, that round semi round, the corner of the right? That would be a wonderful place to have a mural hall around. I think there's, uh, um, there's two bronze pieces over there. And sculpture? Yeah. Yes. And one of them is. Yeah. One is in the corner by the theaters. Yeah, the theaters. There's one there, there. and the Starbucks. Yeah. And there's um, Elations is a bronze that's right there, on this, a little higher at the street level. And in that corner, in that yeah. little yeah. So there's there's two bronzes there now, and they've been there for a while. The only reason I'm bringing them up is. At the time, we had um, difficulty with the developer that owns all of that mall. So if we do uh, approach it, um, then it's the same order. I, I don't really know how that's going to go. When were the bronzes installed? Quite a few years ago. And they were done privately. Earlier than 2006? It changed ownership in 2006, from what, if I remember correctly. No, I think it was right around that time. Okay, so it's probably the same water then. Yeah. Yeah. I mean it would be it would be it would be great because of the location. I mean that was one of the locations that really caught my eye. There's a couple around town that I, I would love to see us go for first, just for the exposure part of it. Um, because everybody would see it. But yeah. So I don't know. No, maybe the owners going through better times now and we can he can be he or she can be open, but that that is a good one. By the way, Starbucks is gone from there, right? Now Starbucks is in the corner, right? When they building a little, I'm not sure. I was told they were moving. Okay. And then Beckins is in the corner. That's number twenty. Let me see. In the corner of Queens and uh, Valley Parkway. And then the Hawthorne store, country store, also has a nice wall. And they might be good partners. They might be good partners. So
So those are the ones we saw, and I think now that you have this, if you have time, yeah. your own time, just to go and see. Just a couple comments. I think the one at Quince, I think there's a, um, an apartment building going up there, or if that's Beacons. Across, right? Where the gas station was? Yeah, Beacon, where Beacons is. And Anne Marie, one other place that I I used to have a wonderful mural coming down Grand. There was a flower shop. If you remember, it was um, Grand. Grand Floral. <laughs> Grand Floral. And it, it's just a big wall there. Um, right now, there's a gaming shop on it. I think it's an orange and Grand. But that that's a great uh, area to have just as an entrance. I know we'll have the uh, arch there, and then we'll have the arch will be on the center. Is it a brick wall? Mm -mm. No, it's wall wall. Yes, cement or something. It's, it's yeah, it's diagonally like across from the number four. Number four. Okay. I think it's one block up, Marty. I'm not sure. I think it's an orange. <coughs> one more? Yeah, I think it's an orange and a grand. I'm not sure, but I think it is. A lot of those. No, Marty's shaking her head like she knows. Yeah, it was right, it was right across from the parking lot. We did first night there. Okay. And it's right. But either way, it's perfect because it's on random and as people come into the main part of the city. It's right on the wall where the uh, grand gaming, I think it's called. There's there's parking there's a parking lot in front there, so they'll never build another building there, so it's really a great billboard. <laughs> So you yeah. say orange and ground. Well, Escondido is number four is on the corner. Is that there's that's, a bank? Yeah, on the on the southern. Co America, Co America mm -hmm. is on the corner. Yeah, I and didn't then see. if you come into town, just not a half a block, it's on the right hand side. It's on the same side as Timekeeper uh -huh. and, and that, but it's closer up as you're uh, to. Okay, so, yeah, so you're saying. Anyways, it's, it's a great location, but I don't know about the. So I'm going to go back and gaming people. <laughs> it should be orange or Escondido on red, right? Right. Okay. I'm gonna, And I think we need to decide or prioritize two, three, or four, like one, two, three, four, and then um, make the decision where we want to go with it. But I had talked to Danielle about maybe launching a mural program, if you want to call it a program or project or whatever you want to call it. And maybe we could fund completely the first one instead of going and trying to find partners that will go with us. That's just an idea. What, what does everybody think? And, and try to basically get one mural going quickly, soon, before we lose the money. <laughs> if I could just add, the library recently reached out to us. They would really like to put a mural on their wall. So mm. I think if we could have that be the first partnership. That would be amazing. That would be um, great. And then if we could take a couple of these other ones, prioritize them, um, maybe identify, like you said, three or four more locations, um, and then we can, we can move on from there. I'm still working on the final document for the mural policy, if you will, so um, I recently got an updated version from the intern that's been working on it. It's been completely turned over to me at this point, so um, we will, I would like to, I was hoping to have it for you here today, but I don't. Um, so hopefully by February, that's something we can review. That'll be our next meeting. Um, that's something we can review, and I can incorporate whatever we decide today into that. Um, well, I think, I think that's a, a, an excellent idea. Plus, it will uh, get the ball rolling a little easier, I think, because the, the city the library is part of us and, and that sort of thing. And, um, and then we can do the, the uh, final, finalization of the details 
for partnering with other businesses because there will be issues about insurance and, and that sort of thing on the building. So that might be an excellent idea. I'd also like to, to throw out, uh, I do have, not on me, but some information about the um, John Paul University. Um, I had talked to them quite some time ago now, um, probably over a year, about a mural project because they are looking into doing their own mural project. And I thought that might be wonderful to let them know that we're putting this together. And they have a, a lot of input with the city as well. So those two, because of the connection um, already established with the city, I think would, would both be beneficial for us to really get started on. I don't know how everybody else feels about that. What about the, uh, this was talked at the very beginning, uh, the uh, silence on that end. Mm -hmm. And that family there at that time was very eager for that. They said, yeah, go ahead. And we're like, right. Are they paying the for it? silos, but I don't know who owns them or anything. Where? I would think, I, what behind is that? Popcorn? Behind popcorn. You know, behind popcorn. It's because they're so tall that they would get, yeah. They want to take, they thought they like. When Christina proposed that to us, she came with that idea, and we, we liked it, but she said it was going to be only temporary, and I remember that. I said, we're going to, and who's paying for that? We would be financing that project, number one, and number two, it would be temporarily, and I don't know what the reason for that is, but I'm thinking they might be removed and then build something there. I don't know who else, you know who I never did, uh, quite never heard of backing up who, you know, who was, saying it was a good idea, who actually owns it. It didn't come from here, it came from outside. Okay. It, it would look nice to come in by Parkway and see you know, Yes, Tom, I want to thank you for all the emails that you sent, a lot of those. <laughs> he sent me about 10 emails, I think, over the weekend. But beautiful work, and a lot of them were actually, I didn't get to read in detail all of them, but I did open every email and I saw briefly what it was about. And um, a lot of them were about silos, and it was beautiful, amazing yeah, work. Impressive. Um, and that would be, I think, I mean, I can't see why anyone would not want that at our, at our gateway, our entry. Um, and they, so I can look in to see who owns them. I can follow up with Christina and see what happened with that project. Where did it go? Was it, you know, you know what? reach out to the owner? I wanted to propose that uh, maybe some of us would take that responsibility to help you out so that you don't have to do it all for us. So maybe Tom wants to follow up on that. I don't know. Is it Hawthorne? Does it no. belong to Hawthorne? No. But it's right next to them. I before it's on the other side. Right? Before the railroad. Yeah. Um, but I think that's one way we one of the Excuse me. One of the council members brought it up, and they knew more about it. And we're trying to remember, was it Jonathan Mace Masson? No, it was, it, was, uh, it was a city council person that started it uh, and said, something they were talking to someone. I thought it was John Madison. Um, he either knew them or something came up. Well, there was a, a, a number of them. He may have been the same person for the whole hospital. He was sitting in the anchor at the north end of the south end of the or the east of the west end of the ground. They were talking about it. That's a huge well, how about I can follow up with Christina on the history side since I'm here with her, but if one of you want to follow up and, or reach out and see who owns that and who we can start the discussion with, yeah. that would be great. Yeah. So, um, as I was checking all my paperwork that I have for you guys, we have a document that I don't think Patricia has because you're the last one that called Public Art Piece. Is that, is a, unfortunately, mine is all messy because I underline it, mm -hmm. but it really did pop 
summarize the purpose of this commission, where the money is coming from. And one thing that I really liked was that we can actually ask for assistance and support from members of the community. Uh, it could be a visual artist, an architect, a designer, a curator. And I was going to propose, can we have, Mario, are you going tonight to that our meeting? It's the um, advisory committee. It's a new committee. I think you guys, uh, Marty, I think you had the first meeting. Yeah, is that the, oh, okay. It's tonight at six. Uh, anyway, they're having them the same time as we are, and it doesn't, I, I don't have time to go home, so I'm going to have to stay around. But anyway, the reason I was going to ask you, maybe you can tell, if we can get them, you know how you talk about Punta Libia and they were really excited about taking that project to another level, right? If we can get their assistance to help us through the mural program, is that something we can do? Can we have people from there to draw to support us and then also get um, somebody from the center, from the museum, maybe somebody from the uh, Escondido Partnership Gallery? Support you in what? I don't see why not, but to support you in what way? Everything we need to do. I mean, we have a lot of work ahead, yeah. a lot of work. And so, almost as a, as a ad hoc type of a thing. They don't have voting power, what it says in this document. But it's just basically support us. How do we do things? How do we call for public things? How do we, you know, what language it's do we do? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's they, they work with us. They don't vote. They just okay. assist us. Right. Sure. Is I don't see why not. Yeah. OK. Yeah. Jen? <laughs> Try to shoot for having something done by May of next year. That's, that's the, um, what is it, the fair, the first street fair? Um, I think there's a good opportunity for working with the library. Um, it could happen in five months. That's the reason why I was saying we might need help to keep on. Um, one thing with reaching out to those other groups, they also have their criteria on what they think is important. And I will just say this, not in a negative sense, but in my personal experience, they feel pretty strongly about they in general. Um, the city has the public art funds, so it's more, they have their ideas and they want us to pay for their projects rather than the other way around. It would be a pleasant um, acknowledgement if it was to work together with them and it certainly can't hurt to ask. But I knew, do understand, especially with the Arts Partnership finishing their mural and they went through a lot to get the money that they needed to do a mural, they got tired of waiting for our project, even though I had told them, you know, the city was moving too slowly and so on and so forth. So I'm just saying it would be great on an advisory if they would participate with us and help, but we have to be careful on how we work that and definitely the fact that they would not have a vote on how the money was spent would, would be difficult. It might, it might be interesting to listen to their idea. They might come up with great, you know what I mean? Oh, no. I, yeah, and, it's, and they do. They do have ideas. I'm just, I'm just uh, kind of putting that out there, being the devil's advocate on this in, in some respect, that um, this has been what the Public Art Commission has been criticized about. 
um, for a long, long time. And uh, that's why I thought it was so important that we do a public art uh, mural program that em embraces all of the local businesses and the community, not just we, you know, the commission came up with one idea and it was done. And so we put all our eggs in one basket and that, and that was not probably the best thing to do. That was several years ago. So it's been quite a while and we do need to put that money to work. So I'm all for that. It is a little of a gray area on the advisory committee on, for me, on where any kind of funding or backing to help, you know, our advice is one thing, but where, where is that going to lead? You know, how do you get something out of it? I, that part is very gray. I understood that um, the committees, uh, different people in the committees are going to come up with different, sprouting different ideas they will have to get together and seek funding for those projects. Now, we could be one source, as long as we have money. We can be one source of that. So I think creative ideas would come out of there, but we need to open it to them and say, some people already mentioned this in the minutes of the last, the first meeting, that how about murals? Yeah, here we are murals, and they are thinking about it, so let's put our heads together and hopefully we can move a little bit faster than what we're doing, lately, right? Mm -hmm. And then the last thing I had written down for mural was uh, that we need to define what a mural is. I mean, I've been taking pictures of murals around uh, the, the state. And what I've been seeing lately in Escondido is not what I, I personally would define as a mural. The mural world comes from muralla, which means wall. And you either paint it on it, or, put, or you put a mosaic on it, uh, on the wall. What they're doing lately is they paint a canvas, a large canvas, and then they just attach it or move it or whatever. Those cars are that large. Which one? When you do the murals and raise them up in the wood, they're all over the way. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and they don't need 30,000 was the, the, the one they did. Right so, yeah, we don't need to. You don't need to spend. And they ask for what? They, they last for four or five years. Oh. Ask them what they do with it. Uh, is there, do you want them? They give you that to your person there. You know, they're well for them. What do you see? And so in, the, so in the policy, we should clearly define. Um, These are all walls. Yes, that the mural should be on the wall. Yes? That's fine. Although, and, uh, remember some of those pictures? And I think it's in the language that when you're working with, they need to put a projective uh, cover, whatever they put graffiti on. Graffiti coating? Yeah. Or a UV coating as well. Yeah. UV graffiti, yeah. 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 But these are less expensive. That's what she told me. I remember when I visited Lombok, she said 10,000 average. But that was back then. So I'm assuming now it's more like 20,000 average. Well, certainly Arts Partnership has the most current information on painting on the wall, but again, that's not painted on the wall. That was 30 something. Yeah, but that's not painted on the wall. And those, uh, those boards or those canvases, whatever they, um, I don't know, we're, we're dealing with a lot of businesses. The first thing that came to mind here is, is by starting with the, with the library as is, connection with the city, then we would be able to maintain a permanent long-term mural. Now, if somebody wants something on their place of business, but they really don't own the building, then perhaps the owner of the building would be more open to the idea of having something that's applied to the wall rather than a permanent 
See, so even though traditionally a mural, I've always thought of it as being painted on the structure itself, you're going to run across being able to use their wall to display something, or is it going to be permanent? And the owners and the people, you know, just just like just like uh, Anna Marie had said, like that bird, that that bird is is, is attractive, okay like that sort of thing. So now it's there permanently. Now they're going to have to whitewash all over that. And do they want to put something up if the pizza place doesn't last? Right. So, See, so either way, the money is going to be threatened by either taking the house down and nobody wants it, or it's going to get whitewashed over when the renter changes. So is the owner, the way in Lompoc, is the owner of the wall, of the building, basically, who approves it and, and in some cases finances it, you know, yeah. if they also own the business. Is there some way to make a part of downtown Studio an art district? Yeah. Well, yeah. 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 Yeah.
I'm going to update some of, some of the information that we've been talking about today. I think that we need to look at it, make sure that it's in there that, you know, it's the owner of the building, not the tenant. You know, obviously, that, I mean, I think that's obvious to most people, but we need to put that in writing. Um, and then um, I'll be, I'll need to meet with him and um, have them review with him as well as Jay Patrick, and, and then we'll go from there. But Again, hopefully, I'm, I'm, I wrote it down to hopefully have an update for you and actually an updated document ready to go. Okay. Maybe not ready to go because you guys will need to review it one more time, but in February. February. Okay. Well, that's, that's certainly reasonable, I think, with all of the, the detail that has to be done. Um, but that doesn't mean that um, uh, our commission can go forward somewhat and find out more information about locations and silos. Uh, what I don't want to do is to put the uh, the cart before the horse and go out there and say, oh yeah, we have this thing going and it's going to be really great and really start soliciting business owners or that sort of thing. Because then, yeah, then it, it can, the rumor mill will just take off and, and um, then we have to clean up all of that <laughs> on what we've what we're planning on doing with it so I would agree I just think that we need to be prepared when we are ready to go so that we can hit the ground yes. running Thanks. so if we can figure out um, I think the only thing we really need to do you guys can look at the locations if you had not had an opportunity to do that um, I think we should move forward with the library is the first one and we can start those conversations and then um, you guys look at the rest of these locations and we can prioritize them and we It'll take, you know, the library will take months, and then we'll do the next. We're not going to do them probably, you know, at the same time. So you'll have time to do that, and then if we can just figure out the who owns those silos, so just so we know who to talk to when the time comes. Yeah. And I, I could reach back to the uh, woman. I don't think she's in charge anymore of the mural program in Lompoc uh, to see how they dealt if they did one mural at a time or if they were they able to manage more than one. If Who's going to Northern California anytime soon? You can drive from 101 and well, 1 and take a little tour in there. Yeah, I guess. I can. Right now, I have two, three years, and they just keep on the road. Yeah, they, they must just start rolling. It doesn't have to take a year to come up with a mural. Listen, does it? once we get the system going, we can do more. Well, that comes to the search. That's right. So, um, excuse me, but um, looking at the uh, clock on the wall, we need to, to move on. I know we're all excited. <laughs> We've got all these ideas with the mural program and, and it, um, but um, let's, let's table that, take lots of notes, and, and uh, we'll move on to the new business regarding the, uh, did you want to share more about the Nikki yes, Foundation meeting? Yes, Very good. So we had a wonderful meeting with the Nikki Foundation. It was very positive. Um, we so we talked about the repairs. Like I mentioned earlier, they are willing to split it 50-50 with us. And so uh, we'll reach out to them when the time comes. Uh, but the additional things that you guys have brought to my attention that you wanted discussed, uh, we talked about fundraisers and special events. They are in full support of doing that. So at this point, I don't know how we. Um, I don't know, we, it's something for you to think about maybe and we can discuss further at the next meetings how we want to do that. Do we want to organize a fundraiser? Who's going to do that? You know, those types of things. But they are completely open to, um, to that idea. Um, the forming of a 501c3 friends group, they are in full support of that. So I encourage you to look at some other, um, I think I mentioned the Friends of the Library, they've been in um, effect for quite a while, that'd be a great group to talk to if you want to learn about how to, how to pull it together, a uh, 501c3. Um, we talked about utilizing alternative artists, they were in support of that, um, they just said that they would want to approve whoever that artist was that we decided to use, so they would want to be involved in that process. We talked about the use of alternative materials because the materials that are used on the sculpture, he, our artist, has to get from Mexico and from Italy and from, and it's very expensive. I mean, the tiles, it's, it's, it's extremely um, 
expensive. <laughs> expensive. Uh, they were not in support of using alternate material, and I understand that because of the integrity of the piece, and that's what it was made of. So, fortunately or not, that's where we're using the, the tiles that were intended, originally intended for the piece. And who makes those tiles? <coughs> this, uh, a lot of them are handmade. But who isn't he the same They're person? Italy. No. no. He, he doesn't make them. Like he purchases them. Okay. No, like doesn't make them. He doesn't make them. Days. Yeah, the suppliers uh, are in the Tuscany region and rural that make those custom pieces. That we don't have a lot of them here, but the one yeah, the foundation said that they were willing to provide us anything that they have because they have an archive down in Chula Vista Santee, somewhere down south. And um, but they didn't think that they had anything that was left from the Queen. They were going to look and see but they think that all the tiles that they have are not appropriate for the repair work. Um, but they said that Leck is fully aware of what's down there, so he would just be buying what he needs. We talked about him buying in bulk to save money. Instead of piecemealing this together, maybe he can go buy a, a, an extra supply, so as things fail, he can repair them as they go. Um, we talked about charging an admission to the sculpture, and they were in support of that as well. Um, I think they understand that times have changed and they are, they've been to the garden, they see that it needs to be repaired. Um, the public art funds that we get through the development fees can't be used for repair and maintenance, so we have to, we have to figure out some other source of funding to replenish our, our maintenance fund. So they were completely in, in support of that. So that's something I think we, we might want to, I'd like you to think about, and we should agendize for the next meeting, is what that fee should be. Should it be for every, you know, is it every person, every, every all the time we're open, how that should be structured. Um, I think, Marty, you were just in Italy, it's every person gets charged, right? Any time of day, any, and mm -hmm. how much was that fee? Uh, it, it was not. It was not expensive as far as um, the average person. I do know that they also have other discounts and group okay. group pricing that's not listed on there. But um, there was a school pricing okay. or not so it's so there's a lot more to consider yeah it's fees. not just this much to get in and this much you know for a senior and that sort of thing but um they're also very limited on their hours mm -hmm. just like really just like we are because they're not open at night so and they don't open until two in the afternoon so it's you know, they, they make the most of the time they have and the time that they're open. So, um, but I'd, I would be more than happy to re research um, if I can find out what their reasoning was. And there are senior prices and they're you know, just like anything. But and Yeah, and maybe if there's other, I don't know what else is around San Diego, California, other gardens, something, you know, we'd want to, right. we obviously don't want to price ourselves out of the no. of the market. We want to keep it reasonable. So, but I, as you said, there's a lot to consider. Senior school groups, um, individuals. And logistically, just being able to do that. Collect the money. How are, yeah. we, going how are, how are we going to actually right. do something like that? Implement something like that? So, uh, I personally think we're probably going to have to, you know, step back and maybe just start with the groups that request tours and get a structured pricing there for that kind of activity um, rather than something right at the gate as people are coming in and, and the charge. Um, also, there are free days um, at the, in, the, in the Tarot Garden. There are certain days during the month that are for free because she didn't want anybody not to be able to come and enjoy it. So um, that might be a way that we can also have it free for our limited hours during the week, but where we offer these specialty tours, 
then have a pricing structure to accommodate that. You know. Yeah, I, I really wouldn't be supportive of charging fees. So we have a, a large part of our community that is low income. I would hate to see families not coming because they have to pay, especially when they have three, four, five children, right? So, um, so I like the idea that you said start with the groups that are asking for special openings. Like, we're doing it for free. Actually. Yeah, they're, they're, and they're ask, they, those groups are starting to ask for more and more. Mm -hmm. And uh, were they open also? Like, could we basically rent the place for events? Yes. That they're open to that. Yes. So that would be an incredible thing. And there are already fees. There are already fees set by in our. The city has a fee schedule, and there are already fees. It's very expensive. So, um, really, something that we may. I'm not not food and drink either. See, that's that's. Yeah, you have the food fee. and drink have to be outside right. of, the, of the venue. Um, Did but, they say that? Yes. Did they say that they couldn't bring food and drinks inside the venue? The um, I, I did not discuss that with them. Because the museum is doing it. The museum is doing drinks and food inside the museum. And they do an awesome job. So what museum? You could what? what? Oh, our museum. Well, this, this has to do with the materials. So the flooring. Be a question to ask the foundation. Would they allow us to bring, not us, whoever wants to rent it? No. Uh, if they would be able to bring food and, and drinks within the confinements of the circle, whether inside or maybe on the outside. No, we 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 have talked about that previously, and that's one of the reasons why it would be um, really beneficial to see about building um, a uh, a gazebo, gazebo type of structure right next to it on the Sankey part of that. Put a slab down so we have a permanent. And then that would eliminate having any kind of food and drink because of the the uh, porous flooring. I noticed that they don't. They have a, a food and drink place in uh, in Italy, and it's quite some distance. You got to go all the way through the parking lot, and you can't bring anything inside. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. That's but what? We will ask, right? Okay. Uh, uh, the the next thing that some of these people are looking for money to support it, I think you find going out to some major corporations here in town, that's quite a great mm -hmm. And they'll throw $60,000 at you right away. Do whatever you want to support the art. We need this good time. Whatever we want to call it. Uh, 
Um, um, it's called the, um, it's the county supervisors. They all get a pot of money every year and they can, people apply, it's a grant program, they apply to do a number of things, install playgrounds, repair this, so, you know, there's, there's all kinds of things. So um, that is also, that's another potential pot of money that we could tap into. After you've got everything put together, mm -hmm. the brochures and that, and this is what we can do. We can send you to say, go, go over. Um, so let me, um, I'm going to move on to the other things we talked yes. about. We talked about the sale of merchandise, which again, su full support for. So they sent me the, uh, they sent me a, a, a brochure of the stuff that they sell. It's basically like bookmarks and pencils and little change purses and you know number of um, swag or merchandise, if you will. So um, they're completely in support of that. I, I asked the the gal who sent me the brochure if she could send me the name of the vendor so that we could start researching how much. Um, it costs to produce these things, and then we can talk about how much we would charge for these things, where we would sell them. Um, and all of their vendors are in Italy, so she, we need to find someone here. No, the merchandise, no, that's all going to be that's all going to be us. So we just need to make sure um, we've got the. Uh, if we jump ahead a little bit to the financial report, we do have. The Clean Colegia Education Fund, um, there's $30,000 in there. We also have the Nikki Di San Fall Art. That's primarily used for maintenance, but we could use it for, for materials if we wanted to. But I think the idea is that um, we at least have it pay for itself and we make a little bit of money on it so that we can. So there'll be a little bit of, of um, cost in the beginning, but the hope is that we would break even and also be making money off these products. We, yeah. So again, all these things, just be thinking about them. I think uh, we need to bring them to the next meeting where we can put a little bit more focus on them and talk about what types of items do we want to sell, um, how do we want to do it. They really wanted them sold on site. Um, and so we talked about how we could potentially do that. We have to have some kind of kiosk or, which I don't know how I feel about that. It's, it's a little, um, I'm a little concerned about security of the, the items. Uh, maybe we just do online sales and have um, a few things at the visitor center in, in, down on Grand Avenue. Maybe we have a little section at the sports center where they can go over and buy something, something in a secure location. So all these things, I mean, these are all wonderful things that they're allowing us to do, but there's a lot of, of things we, there's a lot of logistics that we need to figure out and how we can implement these new programs. We can bring some of us ourselves. I mean, I park outside, so if we had access to a carrier and just bring. I'm not thinking huge stuff. This is all tiny, small things, right? Yeah, t-shirts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The normal. And you don't want to have two thousand or anything. We're just saying a sample, of it, right? So yeah, we could do it. Just uh, so logistics and how and money and cards. The money part is. So. Yeah. Okay. No big deal. <laughs> and the money would go toward where? Where would the money go to? That's the thing. Does it go to uh, The money should go to the maintenance account. Yeah, the it, goes to the, it goes the to the double doses that were there. <laughs> <laughs> the money <laughs> The money should go to the maintenance account because the maintenance account does not have a, a funding source. Well, we have that. We have that amount there, yes. But as like the repairs to the Queen, that could eat that up, you know, very quickly. Those repairs. So the 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 idea of the revenue that comes from selling these things and charging admission and whatnot should all go into the maintenance account. The project accounts, new projects, murals, anything that comes along, that can come through the development funds that are collected annually. Those funds can be used for new things. So that's kind of the, the idea behind that. So we're going to have uh, an idea of pricing for February? Pricing of items or? Um, I, well, I need to, yes. Cost of the items. Cost of the items. They, they gave me their pricing. Their pricing's in euros, so I'm going to convert it and we'll see. Mm -hmm. 
Um, it's really about how much it costs to to um, our produce them. You know, our brand, pricing will be brand right. these items. Right. much different than their pricing because where are we going to get them? And our suppliers, and you have graphic issues and copyright laws, and all of the things that are required to have Nikki's name on it, and those have to be. Um, and the foundation will provide all those things. They do want to see anything that we're going to sell before we sell it. They want to make sure that the quality is good. They don't want a t-shirt that's going to go through the dryer two times and the emblem is in, yeah, it's going to be gone. They want a quality product it's going to have Nikki's name on it. So um, there will have to develop some kind of review process that they can see the items that we're going to sell. So again, a lot of great things happening, but a lot of things we need to figure out along the way. And just get in touch with the company, make sure he doesn't have any tariffs on <laughs> So, uh, it might be cheaper, faster to do it in Italy than <laughs> just, I offer to go pick them up and bring them <laughs> for free. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, I think that was it. That was all we talked about with them. So, very positive conversation. We've got a lot of opportunity here. So, please just be thinking about all of those things. And I think, again, we dive into this the next meeting, maybe a little bit deeper with um, some, you know, Again, more thoughts on what we think about charging, how much we should charge, maybe think about what look, look around, what should we sell? Should we sell just t-shirts? Should we sell bookmarks and, um, you know, all the little tchotchke kind of things? Um, so we'll bring that forward for a future agenda item if that's... They have companies out there that that's all they need. We use them quite a bit, actually. We brand a lot of stuff with our community services logo. So um, that's one place we'll reach out. I think the ones that we use might not be the quality that the, the foundation is looking for, but at least it'll be a place to start. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. So shall we move on then to the liaison report? Yes, there's not really much there to report, if I recall. Um, no update on the transition of the Public Art Commission. Um, uh, Jay Patrick will be meeting with the center next month, so that's why I say I hope that I have an update with you for you in uh, February. So he'll be talking about um, as part of their negotiations with the Public Art Commission and whether that will go to them and what that looks like. So hopefully I'll have some more information in February. The Great Day Park slide out here, uh, the slide does not need repair, it's the actual grapes. There's a little bit of uh, mosaic tile that popped off. We're still negotiating the contract with that artist. Um, we hope to have something in place. They've requested that we change some language. Um, we did change it, so we're waiting on their review. It's just a lot of back and forth. So we're moving forward with that. And then the pillars of the community. Um, as you know, a few of them have been damaged. They have been removed. The artist, whose name is Wick Alexander, has the pillars in his possession. And um, I just reached out to him today because I requested a meeting with him. We'd like to talk to him about relocating the pillars. Um, Escondido Boulevard it was a great location at one point, and I understand the progression of the piece. But um, with the damage that has occurred, we feel like there's probably a much better location for those. So he seems to be open with that. We did move the one piece from Grand Avenue to the Park Avenue Community Center. He was okay with that. He says he'll entertain this conversation. So we were trying to get together last Friday, but it didn't work out for him. So I'm trying to schedule um, another meeting I've requested either next Wednesday or Thursday, because our schedules are full this week. So hopefully we'll have um, we'll have an update um, soon on that. The cost to repair those was about forty thousand dollars. That will be because it was vandalism, and that will be um, the way I understand it. It will be an insurance claim. So I think only ten thousand dollars will come out of the public art maintenance money, um, and then the rest will be reimbursed, and will be the the maintenance fund will be um, reimbursed with the insurance funding. Oh, that's good news. I'd like to get those. So, as far as location, yes. um, we we have a couple of ideas, and of course we'll talk to him. But if you guys have any, I'd like to get those too. Um, Grand Avenue, um, 
we've talked about putting them up and down, up and down Grand Avenue. Um, Heritage Park has come up. Um, the fire stations, one at each fire station. City Hall um, around the pillar, around the uh, fountain here is an option. Um, other city facilities, so if we put one, say, at the library, we have one at Park Avenue, put one at the library, put one at the Center for the Arts, put one at City Hall. Um, and so those are kind of some of the ideas that we've thrown out there. If you have any others, um, if you have them now, I'd be happy to take them. Otherwise, um, again, I'm trying to meet with him either Wednesday or Friday of next so if you could get those to me before then, that would be great. Heritage Plaza sounds like a good place to put them. Uh, and I was going to talk about this later, but I can say no, I think. So we took a tour with uh, Patricia and Danielle on not exactly the same tour we did with Christina, because that was really encompassed pretty much too much. But we did maybe one third of it. And one of the problems that you see is the scale of the pieces to where they are placed. They get absolutely lost if they don't. For example, the pillar that was moved to the park, uh, city, the senior center, you see it. It, it, it has a, an important, you know, uses a certain amount of space and you can see it. So if you just put them anywhere next to huge buildings or whatever, they get lost. So. Heritage Plaza, to me, is kind of an attractive place just because it's not big, it's tiny, and these pieces are not big. Yeah. And there's how many? We have three, right, that are ready to go? We have four that need repair, so I think there are seven. How many did we see when we drove by? Three. Three, three I think three. One is destroyed. So then I think there's eight. I think there's eight total. And the money that you mentioned is just the ones that you have now. Correct. Yeah, there would be additional cost to relocate the others. And we had talked about, um, for effect, putting a couple of them together. Yes. Two or three. Okay. Yes. We always had a good Three is good. Yeah. yeah. Odd number. So I agree. Yeah. So I don't know what you guys think about the plaza, the little heritage. There's no art right there right now. I like it. So you talk about the Heritage Garden over by Arts Partnership? Right, yes. right across. Yeah, there's, there's yeah, no the art. Is grand and Juniper? Yeah, yeah, it's a really nice public place. We have uh, the uh, Farmer's Market every Tuesday there. So it would really be seen by others. Now, the, the other question that can go into this is every pillar is a different type of material. So some of them are stones mosaic and they're more reflective, some are more color. Well, there's, there's a whole um, there's all different storyline from the artists that tells you what they're made of, what they're supposed to mean, which would definitely be a nice thing to incorporate when we replace them so that people understand what they're looking at. Yeah, right now, the way they are, I don't think people no, they, know they're, they they're don't. supposed to be a progression through time and, yeah. and materials. Right. Is he going to redo what he had, what was there? Is that what he's doing in repairing? He's just basically going to the original. Right? Yes, yes. The okay. idea was that well, he, would, yeah. right. he would redo the original. He was going to reinforce them so that they'd be a little bit stronger. Mm -hmm. um, where, depending on where we move them, that might not be necessary because that did bring additional cost. But I mean, it might be worth it to just make them make them a little bit stronger now. It's, you know, they're still being a public place regardless of where they are. So, um, well, I'm sorry. I'm kind of so would it be possible to get like a picture of what of the ones that you have that we have already? The ones ready that to be repaired, to right? Which one are they? Can we? Yeah, I have pictures of uh, uh, their damage, the ones that I have, the pictures that I have, and I'll see if I have other ones. I'm sure there are pictures in the files that I'm just not aware of, so I can send those out. The, the, only, the only thing that I think of, and, and Tom as well, is the space for these in that area. Yeah. Yeah. You know. um. No, they're not. They're not huge, but people use that. So, you know, the placement, and if you're going to put a cluster of them together, that kind of thing. 
And, you know, we definitely have to get from the artist on how he feels about it. Because now it's already broken, broken up by the fact that we have one over at the senior center. So that kind of broke up the set. But um, once we find out how he would feel about it, if he would prefer that they stay in a grouping, then that'll, that'll help make our decision on where we're going to put them. Uh, cluster doesn't mean they have to be right next to each other. I was just about to say, you know, a cluster would be something. But I, I can see through those trees in my mind. I can see a, just kind of a walk through the trees and just have a same ideas going down Escondido Boulevard, but just sort of a, <laughs> exactly what it's winding. Yeah, I mean, it, it sounds great, but up on the hill, still here. the contract. They are they still his property in the agreement? I mean, well, it's not ours. We purchased them, so they're ours. But he does get a say in where they go. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Whatever so the contract. Agreement. Otherwise, we would just move them. But we, we were right. meeting with him, and then so these are just suggestions that we're going to give him. It'll there will be a dialogue around it, and we'll come. Well, if they can be at the same venue in as Heritage Park, so they're at the same location, but staggered out so that they can be appreciated. since our last meeting. There's been no money spent. There's been no new projects, so I don't know if we need to have much discussion on that, but any questions you have? I have a question. So we have 180,550 that has not been allocated to anything. Right. Would it be smart to allocate some of that money for you before it's, it's put away somewhere? If you look up on the last item on the top, $300,000 worth place for a Grand Avenue art project. So I'm assuming this, the city council approved that, right? But if yes. you don't allocate any money to murals at all, they can... So our CIP process will kick off in um, February-ish, Jen, is that about right? Our budget process starts in January and our CIP process, pro process runs alongside of that. Um, so at that time, that's when we'll have to identify projects, and that's when you'll want to allocate money. So, um, Who makes it? the city council will propose. Yeah, we'll propose projects. Uh, we can propose projects and funding. Finance will tell us about how much money we have to play with. This will be. Um, this is here, and then we'll, there'll be another allocation for for next fiscal year. So there will be more money. Um, so, depending on how our meetings fall. Um, we can bring that before you guys and we can um, figure out how we want to allocate the funds if we want. We should definitely do a mural um, program because we're going to be doing these projects, so we should definitely open up um, a mural account. When do you want to do that? Well, it has to be done during the CIP process, so uh, yeah, I think it's, it's February, March. February, March. Is when it starts. No, the money does not get awarded until June. The, correct. Yes, the money will not be there until July, uh, June, July one, actually. If we have this mural program up and running beforehand, and we have something at the library, we can take it to the city council separately. We don't have to wait till July because we have this hundred and eighty thousand dollars sitting there. So if we need to move faster, we can. But if we typically we would want to do that in line with the CIP process. Hmm. Oh, he was. We were briefly talking about the, the price of an individual mural in order to allocate funds to you know that so that it could it could actually work to satisfy more than less. Previously, when we would have projects that went into one project. That sort of thing. So, in the distribution of that, with the information and the guidelines to build the murals, 
and what type we would do, whether we paint on the wall, whether we do separate canvas pieces, whether it's some sort of um, applique, you know, bronze, whatever they might be, then you know, we're trying to get an idea price-wise on how much money we would allocate to that. Would it be $20,000 for something this big? And then on up to you know 150,000 for something this big, so it kind of goes all over the whole gambit. Uh, well, I would start allocating funds where we would start. We wouldn't want to allocate per project. It would just be a mural mural um, project. Right. But even to to figure out how much money that would be. Well, you've got $180,000 just sitting there, and you're going to get more in July. Okay. So, um, and if, if you needed to say something else came up, another another fantastic project came up for the city of Escondido, you can move this money around. It's not this it's would, not locked in. This would be a beginning. This one, the 180, could be a start, right? It could we be could a start, but you, you, could you could put $100,000 into it. The way that we remember the mural policy that we've been working on was a matching grant. So it was originally 5,000. Last time we talked about increasing it to at least 10. Mm -hmm. um, so if we're looking at that, that, that program, that's going to be $10,000 per grant. So $100,000 is going to get you 10 murals. Um, but it doesn't, you know, the, the, the CIP, the, the, the project, we don't have to get into the details. Okay. It can just be a mural. So if there happens to be a mural that you want to fully fund, like the library one, that you can keep that. And, 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 and again, um, I guess one of the, the most important things right off the top is the definition of a mural. Um, because it, it, um, it could grow into three-dimensional um, you know, application type things. Um, and if we specifically say how it's painted, then we're limiting, limiting that. So just kind of keep in mind when we, we define mural, what we're, what we're actually talking about. To, to keep no billboards. <laughs> Some, I don't know. Some of those are going to be clever. <laughs> But, you know, we don't want to eliminate some artists that, that do um, other types of work that is attached to a wall, so you would still need the wall. It's still considered, in, in my world, a mural. Um, that could be added to the language. Yeah. It could be A or B or C. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so we need to make Or sure. other. Yeah, or other. other yeah. Lots of other. I wanted to show you on the uh, capital project this one, how we have 150,000 allocated to pedestrian pathfinders, that hasn't even been really defined. My point being is that we can have a fund, an account for murals without having to be specific. Mm -hmm. in February, I'm going to be in Chile, unfortunately, I can't change that, um, but uh, I wanted to add possible relocation of uh, art pieces that are already there, so when we took the, the tour, the main ones were, what's the name of the other one, the main one is the, this one, um, the one on Valley Park. Uh, the metal tall pieces that are in the median. And so it begins right across from the hospital here. They're called Shifting Threshold by Joan R. Kirby. So they begin in the corner of the hospital and um, what's 
name of this? Hickory. Uh, no, no, hickory. So that's the first one, and that one is really well placed. Long area, and then it's moving east. And what was the problem we saw, Patricia? <laughs> Traffic signs, right in front. Some of them were even the traffic signs were attached to the trees. Yeah, so it's ridiculous. So that there's two things going on that we can bring to the agenda next time. Is one possible of moving the ones that cannot be seen? And Joan Irvin, I think some of you know this woman, mm -hmm. right? She's local. And then, so that would be asking to you be willing to that, and then find because location that basically the whole point of the what we did on Wednesday, I mean on Friday, was some of the pieces are lost because of the location, and in one of them is the community, the community one that we went to see that nobody can see because of the angle and there's no light and so on. So maybe moving to where people can actually see the pieces, and so location needs to be a major. Point before you decide where you put a piece of art. Oh, I think the pieces were placed before this, before the traffic sign. Maybe that's what happened. They were, and then the traffic sign came and she was not happy, and they yeah. wouldn't budge. Yeah. So maybe we can. And I don't know how, how much that will cost, but we can start to. And the other one was maintenance, uh, like the lights on the public ones, like the community lights, and then the other one. Oh, the other one is private. That's fine. Okay. One of the things that the city that I've already talked about, the city of Miami, is, uh, and it's too late now, Luminaria is for next year. Luminaria is all over in print. Mm -hmm. And second, and that way. And now you just do it in the uh, very light bulb. I mean, some of the pieces we saw <laughs> with Patricia and Danielle, it was funny, right? <laughs> some of them yeah. here, we were specifically the one of the transit center, and that's the Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly, that's the whole thing. It's almost like a trippy hand and all of a sudden it's a one week, I'm sorry, I'm going to be on the credit here, but it looks like it's one week's fell down or something, and it just doesn't seem to have, it. it's unmaintained, it looks beat up. Who is that perfect? No. It was private. It is private, huh? Okay. Anything that's listed on our public art collection, um, we don't have anything really complete. I have bits and pieces. You have something that doesn't have something else on it or anything. Is there such a thing? You know, I wasn't even aware of the list that you guys had until we went on this tour on Friday. So, um, oh, uh, so maybe it's a, a matter of, of you know, put, putting the two. It, yeah, it, two it, it exists. Two different lists floating around. So maybe it's a matter of just putting them together. There's actually and there's things off that list too, like the yeah. sculptures in front of uh, Starbucks and the one by the theater there. Right. There. Um, the. You need. Anyways, to can we get together about that subway, and I'll give you the information that I have. Sure. I can somehow really update our collection list. Um, I mean, it must exist in order to carry insurance. Also, the library in, had in their custody for a long, long time some public art pieces that belong to the city, and they have binders thick. And I don't know where that where it went after um, the old library and finally retired and everything. She had a wonderful uh, catalog. All the art pieces that belong to the city. Because it's more than a public art. Intern, intern from high school from the project. They have to do these all the time. We have 
paintings and sculptures. There are other pieces out there besides public art. Yes. That is part of the art. Maybe one of us needs to take this one as a project. Well, it would be a city thing first. You would have the city somewhere would have the records. The records. From our finance department should have a list as well as far as assets. So it should be a pretty easy and a pretty easy to find. But the list that Anna Marie had had other pieces that weren't city owned. So right. that's the list I think. Right. Well, um, whether they were city owned, privately done and donated at what point it was the opinion that if it's a public art piece, regardless of where it came from, it belongs to the collection. Oh yeah, I'm saying I'm just saying that the information that I can pull from our finance department are only going to be the pieces that the city has put money into. So for instance, the um, Hubble piece that you showed us, that is not related to the city at all, right? I mean, it's a public art piece but there's no city funding in there, so I'm not gonna have any record of that. So that's where I would need maybe you guys to come in um, on the pieces that are not city funded pieces. Christine already came up with a list of them, but I don't think it's 100% complete. Yeah, so we can, I'd be happy to sit down and review that. Because it's on the downtown art walk mm -hmm. map, ones that do not belong to the original collection that were donated. Um, so it would be taxing, but I think it needs to come from the city first to start with the actual collection and the value and go from there. And then we can add to the public pieces that have been added. I don't think there's been any more um, paintings or anything like that that's been donated. Those days are kind of past. Okay, so with the uh, future agenda items, we are working on that, but if you're not going to be here in February, then can you put together what you were talking about? Just so we can get it, get it on there. Yeah, yeah. The public art pieces and what kind of information you might you might have on for both of that. That would that would be helpful. I think we'll have to go to other sources to find out things in the library. Definitely a source that um, I don't know where that material was transferred to. So, our next meeting will be February 10th. Is that correct? No, 10th. Well, you can come on Valentine's if you want to. <laughs> We will adjourn at 4.55. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Excellent.